Small block Chevy, guys, if a two barrel is good, a four barrel is even better. What about a six barrel? That's right, it's time for the triple deuce. We've got a tri power induction test, and that's not all. We also are going to show the effect of cam timing on a small block Chevy. Let's get going. In this video, we have two tests on a small block Chevy. That's right, because two is obviously better than one. Test number one, here's the question. Is a tri-power setup, a six-barrel combination, better than a four-barrel? Now, we know a four-barrel setup is definitely better than a two-barrel, but is it getting even better when we add another two barrels? How does a tri-power work? Is it better? Is it worse? Is it the same? Question number two, cam timing. Is there a universal rule for cam timing? If we advance it, does it always do the same thing? If we retard it, does it always do the same? Guess what? In this video, we're going to answer both questions. In the introduction of this video, we pose the following question. How well do these exotic induction systems for a small block Chevy actually work? Here's the problem. The go-to system for any small block Chevy is certainly a street strip combination, is a single four barrel and what we would recommend a dual plane carburetor or a dual plane intake manifold. So you got a performer RPM style and a single 650 or 750 Holley and away you go. That system works really well. It's basically the beige suit of the small block Chevy world. If you pop the hood, you look at it, you go, yeah, that works really well. It has good drivability. It's got good performance. It does all the things that you want it to do, but there's nothing that really says, wow. That's where these exotic induction systems come in. If you have a tunnel ram or a cross ram, or in this case, a tri-power setup, it's not the beige suit. The problem is, does it work as well as your beige suit? We know that it looks cool because a tri-power setup, uh, let's face it, a two-barrel, that's pretty good. A four-barrel, that's twice as good as a two-barrel, and a six-barrel is 50% even better than that. It looks really cool. When you pop the hood and see something like that, it says, wow. It doesn't say beige suit. But the problem is, does it really work? I mean, does it at least work as well as the carburetor? Does it work even better than a single four-barrel? That's what this test was designed to find out. So what we did was take a typical performance 350. In this case, it was the original Gladiator motor owned by Westec. And we ran a back-to-back -back test comparing a typical dual plane single four barrel setup versus this tri-power Barry Grant setup. Now, I'm not even sure that this system is even available anymore. This test was run way back in 2002. But I did like this combination because it's a tri-power. <laughs> it's not a single four barrel setup. And as much as I like a single four barrel setup, and if anybody asks me what they should use on their small block Chevy, I almost always tell them that unless they're going for real high RPM power. Now I try to persuade them to use a tunnel ram or a cross ram or a tri-power just because it's cool. But for most guys as a daily driver, that's not the way to go. But we tested this tri-power setup on a fairly mild combination because what I was figuring is most guys that would put a tri-power on this aren't going for like maximum power. If you're doing that, put a single plane or a tunnel ram on there and, and wind this thing out, put a roller cam in, put compression, yada, 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 do all that stuff. Make lots of power. So for the average guy taking this to cars and coffee or wanting it to drive around or putting it in a street rod, that's kind of what this tri-power setup was designed for. So I wanted to see how well it worked. So I took this Gladiator motor that Chevy that uh, Westac had. Small block Chevy was originally a ZZ4 combination. They had since put a set of Airflow Research 195 heads on it. And for this test, I actually installed a very small camshaft. This was an extreme energy combination, but it was a very small extreme energy. It's actually not a 256, it is a 250. Eight, and that cam was a 480-487 lift, a 206-212, as I said, fairly mild camshaft, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. This combination also, as I said, had the Airflow Research 195 heads on it. It had a, we started out with a Performer RPM intake manifold, and in this case it had a 650 uh, Speed Demon carburetor. We had inch and three quarter headers and an MSD distributor. Basically, this was a very mild cam, otherwise very good 350 Chevy because run with enough camshaft like you would want with those airflow research heads and a good intake. This thing made lots of power. But with our small cam and our single four barrel carburetor, the way that we would recommend it to everybody, basically our base shoot combination, this thing made 412 horsepower and 449 foot-pounds of torque. And again, I want to point out the fact that it made more torque than horsepower 
tells you how mild this combination actually was. But here's what happened when we installed the Barry Grant tri-power setup. So what do you guys think? Is it going to make more power than the four barrel? Is it going to make less power and be terrible? What's going to happen here? Let me know in the comments. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you guys get all your comments in? So here is our Barry Grant final. And as we see, hey, look, the Barry Grant system, the tri-power setup, and basically this has less to do with the number of carburetors, the fact that we had six barrels instead of four barrels. This really has more to do, in my opinion, to do with the intake manifold design. Can you make a tri-power intake manifold design as good as you can make what is kind of the go-to dual plane intake on this Performer RPM setup? Can you make it that good? And it looks like they actually did their homework. I was kind of expecting the tri-power setup to offer a trade-off somewhere, low speed, high speed kind of thing, or basically just be not nearly as good as, as the dual plane that we always um, recommend to people. But in this case, it actually did fairly well. It made 410.5, so 411 horsepower, let's say. Torque was down just slightly, 446 foot-pounds, and it made a little bit less through most of the curve, but basically had the same shape and kind of the same power output. So that what that would tell me is if a guy's putting this tri-power setup on there and running around with his small block Chevy, he's actually going to do pretty well. I don't know that he's going to be racing it around, but it should offer good drivability. In this case, you're driving on the two primary two barrels, so it should actually offer reasonable mileage, good drivability. And as this power curve shows, it performs about as well as a single four barrel. So you have your base suit <laughs> and you have your wild suit and you get to do both. After testing the Barry Grant tri-power setup on our small block Chevy on this Gladiator, milder version of the Gladiator motor from Westec, I decided to do a cam timing test. And making this easier was the fact that this particular motor was set up with an external belt drive cam setup and it was adjustable. So I made testing the, com the camshaft fairly easy. What I wanted to do was find out if there was any adjustment that we could be made to increase the power output with this mild cam. And as it turned out, we found out some pretty good ways to lose power. <laughs> and, but it also helped me illustrate the fact that there are not absolutes in cam timing. When we advance the cam, it doesn't do this or retard the cam. In this case, I didn't get to retard the cam. But people think that advancing the cam adds power down low, retarding the cam adds power up top. And if you keep it in the middle, you keep it in the middle. But the reality is that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And this test illustrates that perfectly. So here was our combination. I, in, for this test, I had the single four barrel and I had the RPM, the beige suit <laughs> RPM intake manifold from Edelbrock. We had the 650 Demon on it. We had the mild 258 uh, extreme energy camshaft on it. As I said, this was a ZZ4350. And equipped in this manner, we had 448 foot-pounds of torque and 410 or 11 horsepower. This was with the camshaft um, at a zero indicated point. Now I did not degree the camshaft when we put it in. We just lined it up dot to dot the way that 99% of the people do it. And I want you guys to make comments and tell me why <laughs> you think it's necessary to degree all of these camshafts, especially mild camshafts like this 258 Extreme Energy. But the reality is in this test, basically what I was looking for was indications. I was looking for big changes. I wasn't looking to dial in the camshaft and put it exactly at a specific spot, because as we'll find out here, um, I just wanted to find out if, is there anything by changing the cam timing? So if we change the cam timing, we see something going in that direction, then we can zero in and look at and see what exactly it is and go, okay, with this cam timing, things are okay. But if we advance it or retard it and don't see anything or see losses, there's really no need to look any further than that. <laughs> <laughs> because we know that that's going in the wrong direction. And that's kind of exactly what we found out here. So here's what happened when we, for some reason, and this test was run back in 2002, I only advanced the cam, and I don't know why we wouldn't have retarded it because it's so easy to do. But unfortunately, this is what happened, so this is what I get to report. Now, I can speculate, but that's all it would be. <laughs> it would be a guess on my part. So here's what happened when we advanced the cam three degrees indicated on our adjustable uh, cam gear. While we all think that advancing the camshaft improves low speed power, we didn't actually see that. Now we ran this thing down to about 2800 RPM. Um, actually what happened at the top, we kind of would expect, 
uh, this thing lost power. This thing lost uh, peak power was down to 404 horsepower. Peak torque was only down slightly. It had less of an effect on the middle portion of the curve, 447 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it started to lose more as we ran out in RPM. Again, this was a fairly mild cam, so we're only talking about 57 or 5,800 RPM. Now, had we run this thing down to idle speed or 1,000 RPM or 2,000 RPM, we may indeed have seen something down there. Um, but in this case, advancing the cam just lost us power on this combination. So that obviously wouldn't be a good way to go. Now, typically, retarding the cam tends to improve that. But as we see here, what typically happens isn't what always happens. I've run lots of tests where we've advanced the cam, retarded the cam, and it didn't do what we thought it is. In fact, all we did was lose power. So while there are general rules, let's say they're not even rules, <laughs> there's more, more like suggestions, um, there are general trends to what we do with a cam. So for instance, if we add duration to a camshaft, that tends to increase power at the top, and oftentimes that increased power at the top can also result in a change in low speed power. Now this doesn't always happen. The reason it doesn't always happen because if we start with a very milder stock camshaft and we put a camshaft in that adds 10 degrees of duration, we may pick up power everywhere or at least everywhere in the tested RPM range because the stock stuff was so mild. And at the other end of the uh, spectrum, if we have a camshaft that we're testing that is very wild and sized properly for the combination, if we add duration to that, Oftentimes we can lose power by doing that, or at least not gain any, and just lose power through most of the curve. And I've done that test a lot when we have enough camshaft or the right camshaft in the combination, and we try to go bigger, all we end up doing is losing power. Now, between those two extremes, there are the areas where if you add duration, we pick up power at the top, we lose a little at the bottom. That typically happens. Same thing happens with cam timing. If we advance it, typically we tend to uh, it pick up power at the bottom and lose power at the top, and the reverse happens if we retard the cam, but as we see here, that doesn't always happen. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about the results of our small block Chevy test on the tri-power and on the cam timing? Here's why I really like these tests. You see, when we're on the dyno, we always don't find huge gains. As a matter of fact, more often than not, we find out ways to keep the power the same or even to lose power, but that's all good information. Now, on the tri-power setup, I actually thought that test was a win. You see, having a tri-power setup is very, very cool. I mean, popping the hood and not seeing your beige suit, the single four barrel, I like that. There's reason to have it just because of that. But the fact that it made basically the same power as a single four barrel, I think that's a win. Now on the cam timing, same thing. Sure, when we advance the cam, sometimes it does this. When we retard the cam time, sometimes it does this. But there's all also good information to be had when we find that it doesn't do anything. Sometimes it's not receptive. Sometimes all we do is lose power, but that's always good information. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Come on, turn on those notifications. I'll keep testing.